Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Fiam Industries Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Monarch's Network Capital. This conference call may contain certain forward-looking statements about the companies which are based on belief, opinion and expectation of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, I welcome you all to the Q4 and FY24 conference call of PM Industries Limited. Uh, we will start the call with the initial comment about the results and the future outlook of the company, and then we will open the floor for question and answers. Uh, so, without much delay, uh, now I hand over the call to Mr. J.K. Jain, Chairman and MD of the company. Uh, over to you, Jain, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the Q4 FY24 earning call of Fiam Industries. Joining me today on the call are Rahul Jain, Joint Managing Director, Rajesh Sharma, Joint Managing Director, Vineet Sani, CEO and Director, Arvind Chauhan, Company Secretary, O.P. Gupta, CFO and other members of the finance team. The investor presentations and the results have been published on both the company website and the stock exchange. I trust that all of you must have reviewed the same. Fiam Industries has reached a big milestone, posting its highest ever sales by exceeding rupees 2,000 crores and attaining a net profit of rupees 166 crores in the financial year FY24. Your company has delivered an outstanding performance, showcasing robust results for both the last quarter and the entire year. The two-wheeler industry is growing strongly with the production volume reaching 21.5 million units in FY24. This increase is due to the improved consumer sentiment and higher ruler demand. April numbers for the two-wheeler industry also reflect the robust trend in the OEM volumes. We believe this growth will continue in the coming years, reaching new heights. For the full year FY24, our valued OEM customers have also done well uh, with Honda, TVS, Suzuki, and Yamaha all achieving double-digit growth this year. Their confidence in future growth is demonstrated by the plans of many OEMs to set up new plants to meet the growing demand of the market. We also see good growth in export with Hero Harley development new models specifically for the international market backed by the success of the X440 locally. Additionally, TVS acquisition of the UK-based Norton had led to the collaborative efforts in developing new products for the Norton brand. We thus believe that overall demand outlook continues to be strong. In order to position ourselves for this demand, we, we are also preparing for a major capital expenditure program. We expect to spend rupees 250 to 300 crores over the next three years to drive our future growth. In the last quarter, I announced that your company had made a breakthrough in the four-wheeler passenger car segment in the European market. I am delighted to share that we have also received orders from the reputed OEMs in the Indian passenger car segment also. We continue to make significant strides in our journey, uh, marking this as a major milestone as we expand into the passenger car market in future. Further, I am pleased to inform that our board of directors have recommended a dividend of rupees 20 per share on the enhanced share capital post to one is to one bonus share. Uh, I now hand over to Mr. O.P. Gupta and the finance team to update the operational performance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
good afternoon to everyone first i will present two four numbers after which i will cover the full year fy24 the company has registered quarterly sales of rupees 554.7 crore in q4 of fy24 as compared to rupees 432.84 crore over same quarter last year registering a growth of 28.1% the ebitda in quarter 4 was rupees 75.46 crore translating into an ebitda margin of 13.6% as compared to rupees 16.21 crore over same quarter last year with a ebitda margin of 13.91% the pet of the company has also increased to rupees 47.1 crore as compared to rupees 38.05 crore in q4 of fy23 representing an increase of 24.02% now i will briefly cover the numbers for full financial year 2324 during fy24 the company has achieved net sales of rupees 2014.37 crore as compared to rupees 1834.04 crore in fy23 representing a growth of 9.83% as a percentage of total automotive lighting the led lighting stand at 52% in comparison to 49% during last year abita stand at rupees 267.97 crore as compared to rupees 247.85 crore during fy23 pet of the company stood at rupees 165.84 crore as compared to rupees 139.63 crore during fy23 which is higher by 18.77% during the year the company has made a capex of rupees 85.86 crore with this i end the financial brief and now the floor is open for question and answers thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of C. A. Garvid Goyal from Invest Analyst Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, I am Audrey. Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir, and congrats for a good set of numbers. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, one is, uh, our company has consistently delivered bottom line growth year after year. and while this is commendable uh, i am concerned about our top line growth uh, despite having the marku clients we are only achieving a lower double digit top line growth although we may be uh, outperforming the industry i believe a company of our caliber under efficient management should adopt a more aggressive approach to increase the market share and diversify further so can you please elaborate on why we are not pursuing more aggressive strategies for the top line growth and or what what can be the steps that we are planning to take the, uh, to improve I go to the uh, growth trajectory further. That's my question. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I think, as you rightly said, we have outperformed the industry over the last many years. Uh, but also, looking ahead, if you notice, we have actually made a lot of investments over the last 12 months, and a lot of investments are now in the such as we just announced uh, large capex program. Uh, so, so in line with what you are saying, we've already thought through that there are several new areas that we want to work in. The four-wheeler segment is obviously something that is uh, could be a very, very big growth driver for us. The other segments, including hub motors and others, are also being talked about. So, I think your point is already noted. The management has already been working over the last 12 to 18 months towards several new initiatives, and you will see the output over the next couple of years. And the investment for that is being made as we speak. And so you mentioned about the capex, like uh, what is uh, what is the area that uh, this uh, 250 to 300 CR capex will go into? 
it will go across. So one is obviously enhancing our existing capacity for the current segment. There is certain capacity requirement in South India. There is also going to be capex for the new projects which we announced on four wheelers. There will also be capex around the up motor uh, units. So all of that combined, we envisage 250 to 300 crore capex to happen. And so. Uh... I'm also concerned about the apparent delays that are happening in uh, Freedom and the Gogoro project for manufacturing the hubbies and the motor controllers. So could you please explain why there has been no meaningful contribution to our top line so far? Additionally, please also provide some details on the capital expenditure incurred on this project to the date and specify uh, when we can realistically expect to see some of the revenue generation from this area. See, so uh, about this Gogoro, what they did is because initially they planned for market B2B. Right, that was the one bottleneck because uh, the prices of the first model which is being launched was a little bit higher price. The acceptability from the market was very poor. Now, company is already working to launch a new vehicle which will be competitive in the prices, which is equal to the part of the vehicle which is being already in the market. And company will be soon uh, giving that uh, overall information to launch this kind of vehicle, which will be at par of customer, and uh, same time we will be doing the indigenization uh, for this hub motor and motor controller because once it will be indigenized, the PMI and other scheme can be managed by uh, Gogoro. So another six months time we will be in position to give you the exact figure and the uh, overall volume. Basically, we were not able to give more because the production was of Gogoro was not there. Okay. So they have produced so far only 5,000 numbers. So basically, it is driven by the OEMs. So do you see any kind of revenue coming into in 25 from this area? We are expecting. It is totally be depend on the customer as well as the and from Gogoro. Okay. And lastly, on the innovation side, so could you also provide an update on the development timelines and the current stage of uh, that USB charger and the gas sensor, which we uh, which are being developed with technical assistance from the Toyo Bento. Further, what are the new innovations in the products of uh, in the terms of new uh, product development that we are doing right now at our R and D centers? Toyo Denso is the it is being not the new part; it is being developed and already in the market. It is all under supply since last five years, wherein we are working for some new projects also, which will be still under discussion with customers. And what are the new products that we are doing at our R&D centers apart from these things? Yeah, we will be working for so many projects like, uh, especially for the lighting areas only. One is the major thing which we are planning right now to uh, establish our EMC MI lab which is necessary to have uh, testing and validation in-house. Laser. And uh, laser headlamp. Yeah. So I'll just add on, uh, we are working on uh, three main technology. One is a laser technology, which is a technology of the future. And that will go both in two-wheelers and four-wheelers. And we propose to be the first in the industry to launch that. We are working very closely with the customer. Second, we are also working on a night vision, which is the need for, uh, uh, you know, A segment, B segment, and C segment car. So we are working on that technology along with customer. And third, we are also working on the ambient lighting technology, which is mood lighting, which is for specific to formula. So that is also new technology that we are working on. So apart from that, then we are also working on certain technology, which we cannot disclose at this moment. And so, so. and so what is the guidance for ever 25 in terms of top line? So it is difficult to give a number on, on this, but we will grow organically in this uh, uh, around 15, 12 to 15 percent is what we anticipate in the coming year. However, if some, uh, you know, targets come across our way, we will uh, capitalize on that. But at this moment, we anticipate 12 to 15 percent. Understood, sir. That's it from Michael, sir. All the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gagandeep from Invest Analytics.
advisors llp please go ahead mr gagandeep your line is unmuted please proceed sir my question is already answered thank you okay next question is from the line of viraj from simple please go ahead yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, congratulations on good set of numbers just couple of questions the first is on the pe part uh, you know this new order which we talk about if it can just give some more perspective in terms of is it an existing order or it's a new product uh, development which we back for and what will be the size of the order and when do we expect it to commission the one of the order that we received for headline for european model uh, is a totally new development so we are designing it in pm right and uh, the development is on the design has already been approved by the customer prototype is under approval and this development i will take another 6 months for the tooling to be developed and uh, then we will uh, start the supply let's say in around uh, end of this financial year we should be starting the supply the expected revenue will depend on the offtake from the customer uh so on the indian oe order you know any update you can give in terms of size of opportunity when do we expect it to start yes so uh, we received order from uh, three of the indian customers already uh, one of the product is under development and we believe that we should be able to personalize it fast in next few months we will start in a small way for the one small lamp and then other rfus we have started receiving and worthy on that so this order is for the headlamp piece or is it more on the tail lamp or you know any color for the you can get that is one and uh, you know when you say two to three months we are how much we are allocating for the four wheel piece so uh, this order is for small lamp at this moment but led new technology lamp and uh, this we are doing it from our current plant only we are not investing specially for this business because we have capacity and uh, this design uh, is complete and approved by customer the product is under tooling at this moment okay and so on the capex piece you know when we say 250 300 cr capex on next 2 to 3 year Uh, you know our earlier communication was when you look at an existing facility which is largely for two wheelers uh, you know we have sufficient capacity to cater to say around close to 20 to 300 to 300 crores scale you know if the market shifts to led uh, and hence the capex expectation you know for next 2 3 years at least was very muted so when you say this 250 300 cr even for pv you know we are not going majorly in a brown field or not in a green field way So, what are the major components of this capex? I mean, so if you see the current year capex is already eighty six crore, and um, so if you see organically, if you were to put next two three years number, you will already be at two hundred odd crore. So, additionally, we built in some more capex for expansion at our Oslo plant and also for four wheeler. That, as I said, is the SDB number which will be crystallized over the next six nine months. So that's the broad capex range we are getting. Okay, and in terms of the existing two wheeler business, so, so you know, if you look at our uh, production, if you compare the production numbers of say HSMI or Yamaha, so last say three quarters, our sales performance has been underperforming compared to the production growth we are seeing in. you know in those two customers so what explains the underperformance i think you, what you should do is uh, ideally look at uh, more a yearly and a three year trend uh, we are yeah, looking at last three quarters so almost a year is what i'm looking at yeah so actually except for the first two quarters last two quarters we've done better than the than the one Uh, but what happens when we explain this last quarter also sometimes one product or a particular customer is not there we not there if you look at overall volumes and overall our uh, our growth and if you look at on a yearly basis we won't find much of a difference there uh, can you give you know the wallet share which you used to give earlier in terms of headline payments for the top four customers 
sorry, Virat, uh, that uh, wallet share actually we tried to work out, but uh, you know, this information we uh, no, you know, uh, take from the customers as well as uh, some uh, internal sources. So this time we are not able to do that. Okay. Just two more questions on the gross margin part, and you know, again on the realization as well. Uh, so, if you look at this particular quarter, we have seen a sharp moderation in our gross margin. Uh, so, what is it driven by? And on realization, you know, if you see globally, there's a change in technology uh, in LED itself, which has given a drop in realizations uh, across the board. So, for us also, are we seeing any similar trend playing out? <laughs> So you are uh, specifically question on the growth margin, or uh, you are talking about the EBITDA margin? No, my question one is on the gross margin, sir. Uh, that if I look at this particular quarter, Q4, we have seen a moderation in gross margin. Uh, you know, almost 200 basis points year on year. Uh, what is it driven by? So if we see the only, the, if we see the only is same, even the other core things are same. The only thing, uh, some, uh, some increase in the manpower, but this is the main difference. Otherwise, there is no big difference. So, if, I think I would say, yeah. rather than quarter, because what happens, there is always a lag in the customer compensation of the raw material costs. So, it is always better to see annualized working of gross margin. And if you see that, the gross margin has not changed. Okay, uh, just one more question. On the realization part, if you can just give some perspective, are we seeing any moderation in realization, especially in the LED part? No, I think it is just the same. It continues as similar because we have to have uh, pass through compensation from customers and it continues in the same level. Yeah, but uh, so, uh, okay, got it. And on the replacement business, you know, if I look at this business, you know, for last two or three years, we've seen a very healthy growth. And given where the market is shifting towards LED, usually the replacement cycle is much longer than what one would think. So what explains the growth in replacement business for us? See, our replacement business is going on the same, you know, uh, uh, requirement from uh, this, uh, whatever the products we are uh, selling earlier. The only difference is that we, uh, the lighting, lighting requirement is no more. It's not because of the LED. It is, it is steady. So even, uh, you know, during the current year, we uh, registered a good growth in the other replacement market. It's one fifty one crores. So when, when, as the vehicle becomes old, the old technology product requirement goes up. And therefore, when we supply that, you see the growth in the business. So this is always, it always happens like that. As the time passes, the lamps get replaced, the bulk technology, not the energy technology. And therefore, you see the growth in our replacement. Okay, okay. And any update on the insurance, you know, uh, for the fire claim? Uh, so this is, we already informed, we already, uh, you know, uh, submitted our claim, and this is under process. Okay, I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Next question is from the line of Jatin Chawla from RTL Investments. Please proceed. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, just checking on the India PV side, uh, did you say you received orders from three customers or was that RFP? Yeah. So, so we have orders total from three customers and we have RF, RFQ from another three customers. So we, we will, in short time, will be working with six customers in OEM, including Xbox. Got it, got it. Uh, and uh, on the CAPEX side, uh, I don't know why you guys are calling this as a large CAPEX because it seems you're sp already spending 80, 85 crores every year. So this two, 250 to 300 crores is the same run rate. So it doesn't seem there is any big pickup in, in, in CAPEX or you know, you're not uh, seeing kind of growth avenues to invest uh, going forward. So that's just some understanding on that. Now, so just our maintenance capex is more like 40, 40 crores. So we just think that over and above maintenance, there is some requirement, as we mentioned, there is requirement at the suit plan. It could be requirement of like, the whole dealer thing at some point in future. So given that this question has been asked, offer uh, offer guidance, we are giving a number that we think is 
Got it. So this 250, 300, 300 crores. What sort of asset turnover one can expect? What sort of you know incremental revenue could come from this? Thank you. About uh, two, 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 seven, uh, it's the, the almost three times. Three times is what we understood. Understood. And this hub motor capex uh, that you're mentioning, will this be for uh, beyond Gogoro, or this is largely only to service Gogoro needs? This is as of now is for Gogoro. Further on, once we, this overall facilities will be ready for digitalization, we will work together with Gogoro to uh, to cater this uh, motor, hub motor and motor controller to other OEMs also. Got it. Got it. And this quarter, we have seen some pickup on uh, Yamaha revenues as well. Uh, you know, quarter, last few quarters, the run rate was more around 70 crores. We have seen this go up to more than 80 crores. So any new models that have come in, or this is just seasonality where the March quarter was strong? Yeah, there are, there are two models which is being launched during uh, last year. This one is of Arox 160, and other model is for export. So those models have given us uh, positive growth and uh, sales figure overall. And going forward, uh, I think there were a uh, few another five six models that were going to come. So should we expect that this run rate will continue to go up? Yeah, of course. We are we are very much uh, hopeful for this, and we are working on that area. Got it. Got it. And just one last question. So Hero, I think you spoke about the fact that. Uh, on the Harley side, there is uh, quite a bit of traction. But beyond the Harley and, you know, in, in terms of some of the m more mass market models for Hero, uh, are we seeing any kind of orders come in for those as well? Yeah, there will be a few models which are already being uh, developed and might be next quarter if these, these models will be launched. And uh, thereafter, we can give you the right picture. Which model is being launched and which what all kind of uh, products is being developed by us? The but okay. there are seven uh, projects which are under pipeline under uh, Hero model, mass models, as well as uh, Hero Harley also. Got it, got it. Uh, thank you. I'll go back to the queue. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Omkar Arora from Iraya Capital. Please proceed. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. I have a couple of questions regarding the long-term view of the company. So if we see the sales growth for the company over long-term, last 10, 8 to 10 years, we've grown at a CAGR of almost 11%. And I understand that we have four major revenue streams going forward, which are the two-wheeler business where we are already catering, uh, where we provide lights and mirrors, LED lights within the two-wheeler segment, New revenue segment where we plan to cater to the four four-wheeler segment and new products under our JV with GoGoGo. So my question is, what kind of growth do we expect in the next three to five years in each of these revenue streams? So, uh, so let's look at organic business. So organic business is going to be driven across by the four-wheeler industry growth. We've highlighted that we have. Uh, we have a leadership position there. We have a leadership position in the EV segment. We also have indirect exports. So to that extent, uh, in the core, uh, core two-wheeler segment, uh, we feel optimistic that the growth is coming back. Uh, you mentioned last 10 years. Out of that, last five, six years have been very tough for the two-wheeler industry. So, right. so uh, A, the core organic growth should be stronger. Uh, we 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 expect that uh, the, given that the two wheel industry will do well, we should do even better. We should definitely do 20 to 15 percent of organic growth. Over and above that, uh, there are several areas which we've highlighted, which we're looking at, including the motor business, including the four wheeler business, and other opportunities that may arise. And I think we are preparing ourselves for those opportunities. So if you look at some of parts between mm -hmm. organic and other. Uh, we, we do expect our growth to be much better than what you have missed in the past. We are we set ourselves some ambitious targets uh, on that, but some of them are binary and will depend on some of these outcomes, especially on the four meter and and half meter. And and you may have to be patient for a few quarters before they kick in. Is there any kind of number that you can throw on the four wheeler segment in particular? What kind of numbers do you expect to do in the next one year, two year, and long term, five years or so? 
So, uh, not at this moment, uh, as you are aware, the incubation period for four wheelers is little longer. So, we are already getting inroads into the customer that is step one. I think by end of this financial year, we will be ready with our proper business plan and we can share the numbers. Uh, so what kind of margins do you expect in this segment, the four wheeler? Four wheeler segment has similar margins as uh, two wheelers. However, the value goes up because the price range is higher. So, so you pay more on the absolute value and the margins remain similar. Okay, but don't you think you face stiff competition in this segment as compared to the segment where you're leaders already? And that will kind of shrink your margins here. But, uh, we are preparing accordingly. Okay, and I have a last question. Can you also provide some details around the total capacity and the current cap utilization and the growth in the coming years? Can it be met by the current capacity or do we see more capacity coming up in the next few years apart from this financial year as well? So if you can throw a timeline of capacity that you must have prepared. Uh, so that, uh, we are around 80% in the You know, in our business, uh, we have a good time for development, and during the main time of design and development, we also generate the capacity. So it is, uh, capacity generation is not a big issue for us. Okay, sure, sure. Th thank you so much, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Varun Arora from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So just some clarifications I want. So previously participant uh, one asked, you know, the growth you said 12 to 15 percent. So that's the revenue growth you're expecting for the FY25? Yes. Organic revenue growth. Organic revenue growth. Okay, sir. Yeah. And uh, just another thing, uh, on the PV uh, Indian OEM, so you want to order, and uh, you said one project is under the development out of the three persons. Is this the uh, right understanding, sir? Sorry, I can you repeat your question. Basically, basically, there are three customers you got uh, the orders from the PV uh, OEM, Indian OEMs, right, sir? And one project is under development, which will come out in uh, next three months. Yes, so three customers, one is export to India at this moment, and three additional is RSC uh, phase. Okay, and all uh, all projects are under development now? I mean, uh, so uh, after the three months? Have, they are under development, and okay. one product of Indian customer is shortly time. I think we should enter into SOP in the uh, in next three to four months. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, if I may ask you, how big the order is for, I mean, which you bought? So, uh, this is a small order at this moment, uh, around uh, 10, 10 crores annually, approximately, uh, for a full full uh, calendar year. Uh, but it is more of a beginning to start with, with the customer. And uh, you will start the execution in FY25 only. I mean, uh, the 10 crores we are yeah, estimating in the, for FY25. In, in the current year, we will start the SOP, yes. Okay, and uh, can we uh, say the next year in FI26, this will go by uh, the double or triple? I mean, just, just need some guidance on that one for FI26. Actually, this will grow, uh, and there are adjacent products for which we are now receiving RFQ because we are developing this product. So this product will get us more products also with the same customer. Okay, sir, okay, sir. And the last clarification I want uh, on the hero product pipeline. So you said there are three products right now under the pipeline. No, there are hero. Uh, there are seven products as of now under development. Okay. And okay. Two, 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 three are on tooling side, and another three is on designing side. So total, we have a six uh, product as of now. Okay. Further on RF, further on RF, we are working on the RF also. Okay, sir. That will be all from us. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Jyoti Singh from Aryan Capital Markets. Please go ahead.
Yes, Jyoti, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I just wanted to understand that uh, the new product that we are working on, uh, that is called Ambient Moonlighting. So uh, if you can be able to explain how big is this opportunity and we already having a competition in this segment. And along with that, a few of the uh, auto ancillary that is already working on it. So how big uh, the opportunity that we have and uh, what are the target in that? So thank you for this question. And uh, let me tell you, there is no very well organized fraud uh, organization today in the country who is serving this market because this is a growing market with a big potential, the ambient lighting uh, or we call mood lighting in the cars. Especially all the new EVs have this feature. So we are, uh, you know, exploring this market in a very focused manner. We are getting very good response from the customer. So currently we are working on uh, three RFQs. On, on this because we already could manage to get RFQ from the customer and we hope to finalize at least one of them in this, this financial year. And having done that, it will lead to more more uh, such businesses. So we see a high potential in this business. Okay. Thank you, sir. And the, and the scope, scope can go up to in like say three to five years up to uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 crores. I mean, that is the kind of opportunity it has. Okay. Then, sir, another question on the premiumization side. Like uh, now, there are a uh, number of vehicles that is uh, upcoming uh, time uh, more in the premium segment. So, how we are seeing the uh, increased content for a vehicle? If you can explain on that side. So, uh, the trend is uh, Jyoti. Electronics is increasing in all vehicles. The content of electronics is going up exponentially in all the segments and both hardware and software. Related to this, cyber security content is also going up because data security is becoming more and more important. So the, uh, and lighting as such is having a lot of electronics into this. So we expect the content to go up in future for all the lighting products. So currently, sir, we have done any trade, right? Say again, sorry? Uh, currently, we have done any price hike in this quarter or we are planning in the upcoming quarter? Price hike? Yes. You are right. asking about the price hike? Yes, yes. You know, pricing gets settled at the time of development. And uh, once the product is designed, there is no change. It is then only the raw material change, which is passed through and we get compensated by the customer for that. Most of the, not all, but most of the customers. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Picha from Multiact PMS. Please proceed. Yeah, hi, this is Akshat here. Uh, first of all, congratulations on very good set of numbers. Um, I had two questions. So my first question is on the capacity utilization side in our organic business. So uh, if you could, uh, you know, just spell out what is the capacity utilization, you know, on an average across plants uh, and, uh, um, you know, how do we look at, you know, brownfield expansion given there would be constraints which you said in the southern part of the country. So that is number one. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll follow up with second question afterwards. Uh, so uh, about the current capacity utilization, from this is around 80 percent in the last quarter. And uh, your uh, next question is about the capacity in investment in the south uh, units. We are doing that. Yes, we we are investing over there. Okay, and. Uh, so with, you know, all these PV orders and RFQs in hand as of now, so we've got already three PV orders which are in tooling and development stage and three more <laughs> RFQs. Um, so while we understand that, you know, it, it will be like a starter for FY25, but from FY26 onwards, uh, you know, what kind of a contribution do we expect from these PV orders to our overall revenue? Um, you know, like do we think that this could be like a 10% of revenue uh, from FY26 onwards? 
So I think it is too early to estimate this. And I think I had just shared a couple of minutes ago, by the end of this year, we will try to crystallize our plan for future. Too early to estimate as, as of now on the forthcoming revenue. Right, right. Right. Okay. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Divyanshu Sachdeva, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Sir, am I audible? Please. Yes, you are audible. Please proceed. Sir, I just had very basic question. So, uh, is it possible for you to give some guidance or maybe some outlook on the two-wheeler uh, industry going forward, maybe for the next year? Uh, we uh, we believe that if you look at the last five years, you will see that we are still not, uh, you know, we are still below the peak that was at in FY19. So there is no reason why the wheeler industry should not grow and surpass that very soon. As we mentioned, the retail numbers in the industry look quite robust. So uh, double digit growth is, is something that we definitely expect uh, going forward, not just for the current quarter or two, but I for the next couple of years. We see all the in shoots for the two wheeler industry to do that. Okay, and is it possible for you to share some uh, margin range in your uh, mirrors business? Maybe any any basic range for that? Absolutely. Margin range, uh, specifically for mirror business? Yes, I mean, is, there, is it possible for you to give some range in that segment? So the margin across the product are same because we are supplying to same customers. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow up question is from the line of CA Garvid Goyal from Invest Analyst Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, just one question on the margin. Uh, do we see any kind of improvement in margin in FY25? So uh, uh, we, we are al already on uh, 13 plus uh, percent, and we definitely will try to level our be do best about the improvement of the market. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next follow-up question is from the line of Viraj from Simple. Please proceed. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just two, three questions. One is on the PV part again. You know, you talked about three confirmed orders, and then you have three RFQs. Uh, and then there's an export order, which we announced last time. Uh, so, uh, you know, internally, what milestones you'll be looking at before putting in or committing to a greenfield capex? Committing to a greenfield project capex. Yeah. capex. Okay. So at this moment, for this financial year, we, we do not see any greenfield investment for passenger vehicles. And honestly, I don't see next year also, because going forward, we will be targeting one big order, which we anticipate in next financial year, which will lead us to set up a plant. But today, for next two years, we will not be investing in greenfield project for passenger vehicles. So the existing orders, which we've got, would largely be niches or in, you know, uh, in terms of opportunity scale, they will be like sub 50 crore or sub 25 crore kind of opportunity scale. So currently there are niche orders and uh, this will be produced in our existing facilities only. Okay, got it. Second question was on the two-wheeler piece. You know, if we look at the other customers, right, uh, where we in the past have talked about uh, EV players, you know, are the major contribution there. You know, if you look at some of our top customers like, say, Ola and a few others, they've seen a very healthy the ramp up in volume and that is continuing. But when I look at our others customer revenue base, it's largely been flat. So what explains the divergence? See, uh, you are talking about the customer wise, uh, you know, business share we share with the right? Yes, sir. So that see, we we already shared this. Uh, our top five customers. It is already there. Rest all, you know, some somebody is increasing, somebody is decreasing. But because our uh, turnover is, uh, you know, almost 10% growth, 
So because of that percentage that remains same in the, in the range of 11 percent. Okay, because that and if you, and if you so total, if you also see the total EV industry volumes from 23 to 24, the the, the numbers are from 7 lakh or to 9 and a half lakh EV. And you are aware that because of various changes to fame subsidy and all, there have been some challenges to a few customers. So for us, uh, we've still grown this pie significantly. And what I highlighted, as a percentage, it may still look the same, 11%. But but as an absolute number, we have gained it. Yes. Okay, just two more. You know, when you talked about six or seven projects for Hero, are all these uh, new products or, you know, even for some of the existing brands, we will be looking to supply them? No, these are all new products. Okay. Okay. And last was on the Yamaha page. Uh, you know, recently they came up with a press release and they are moving some of the global models, uh, platforms from ASEAN to India. So for us, you know, how should we understand the opportunity? Would we be the sole supplier or any... Right. Recently, you have heard this Aerox 160, which is being launched not only for India, and we, we will be soon starting from here to Indonesia also. So all models, whatever is being concentrated right now from OEMs, are to be made for Indian market as well as for global market also. No, my question was about existing product brands being moved, the production being moved from Asia to India. So in that sense, I was just trying to understand, would we be a beneficiary or? Yes, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing and this has already been uh, working like that already. Whatever products as of now is being made here is being exported to Asian countries too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ravi Purohit from Security Investment Management Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, most of my questions have been answered. Just one you know, broad question at the company level. I think we've discussed a lot of initiatives over the last six months on the call, right? Um, we get uh, our initiative to uh, with Goguro, uh, new business coming in from passenger vehicles, uh, new RFQs for uh, uh, you know Hero uh, Harley. Uh, and I think we've also mentioned today during the call that we are looking at, you know, 12 to 15% growth organically. So if uh, if you put all of these together, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, number is the company like aspiring to do in terms of revenue over the next three to four years? Will it be like a difficult task for us to hit 4,000 crore revenue in three years, four years time? See, we don't... We are very bullish. Yeah, we, I mean, there are many opportunities we see we kind of highlighted them, what are these opportunities, how are we working around them. But we, we don't want to give you a specific guidance number, but organically, plus in organic, there, there seems to be a large potential. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Nikhil from Simple. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, uh, just one question, sir. Uh, as you said, uh, the total EV volumes are 7 to 9 lakh. If you have to understand the total size of uh, the lighting, which the EV volumes would be corresponding to, what would be that total size? Would it be like... Uh, approximately 100 crores or it, would it be still lower than 100 crores? The total size of lighting which the EV volumes would be corresponding to? I, I think uh, the better way of looking at it is EV is right now 5% of the total uh, industry at this point of time as well in terms of overall uh, number. And, and I think Taking one benchmark number will not be correct whether the EV per EV content is 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 because different EVs will be priced differently, especially as this number moves from 5% to a higher number. So I so uh, so if you want to take a benchmark, you can take a 2,000, 3,000 rupee per, uh, per, per acre uh, 
but that may not be the right way of looking at it because in future you may have more premium EVs coming or less premium coming. Correct, correct. So I just wanted to understand what is the approximate size of lighting which EV is corresponding to today. I'm not trying to any extrapolation for people. But anyways, second question, based on the pipeline and RFQs you are finding in Hero, over the next three, four years, do you see Hero can come in, uh, be one of our top five customers or would you say the pipeline does not give such a confidence? Uh, just some... No, we, we are very much honest about this and we will be working together with Hero not only seven projects, but further projects are also in the pipeline. And we hope uh, this our overall uh, customer range, uh, Hero will be also on the top. Okay, fine. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rohan Adwan from Pratt Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. Sir, I just wanted a clarification. When we say 12 to 15% organic growth, what do you mean by organic? It is just a two-wheeler business? Yeah, it just means our basic health two-wheeler business and not uh, the new business which may come significantly, whether it's Hobro or whether it is the TV business uh, which we are uh, attempting. Got it. Sir, and in one of your comments, you said that the ambient lighting opportunity could be a 500 to 1000 crore opportunity in a few years. So, can you elaborate on what that opportunity is and what are uh, you doing as a company to address that? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, each of the new cars which are coming in, they have this ambient lighting or what we call new lighting. So, wood lighting has an electronic component also. There is a driver which is used to light up the interiors of the car. And this lighting goes not only on the four doors, but it also goes on the central console and the dashboard. And this overall package ranges from 3,500 rupees to 8 to 10,000 rupees. It, it's, it's good content in per car. So we are working aggressively with our customers to gain this opportunity. Okay. Okay. And so there, uh, uh, I mean, do you have, do you have any disadvantage versus the incumbent or it's a new opportunity where you and the competitor would be equally competent to address? No. We, we do not have disadvantage, rather we, I would say we have advantage of the new technology that we are trying to introduce in Indian lighting. And that is, uh, will be liked and uh, promoted by our customers. So uh, we feel we are at an advantageous position in this business. Got it, sir. Thanks for taking my question and all the best for the next few quarters. Thank you. We have our next follow-up question from the line of Jatin Chawla from RTL Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Just a quick follow-up. For this ambient lighting, uh, uh, is this a technology tie-up that we have done or the, the technology has been developed internally by the company? So we have developed internally and wherever required, we are taking support of uh, one of our German uh, agencies. Uh, wherever required, we are taking its support. But it is developed internally by CM Group. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Manoj Shaw from Kiva. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the chance. Uh, just two quick questions. One was for the 12-15% uh, growth. What is the underlying two-wheeler OEM growth that we are assuming? Eight to ten percent. Right. And is that the OEM visibility uh, that we have? They are asking us to prepare for so much. I mean, that is obviously the changes, but this is the current outlook. Um, so we, we do expect uh, this kind of a growth to come through over the next couple of years. 
Okay. So, and earlier we used to talk, and I, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, that the uh, automotive LED mix will improve and we have a higher margin there. Can you just talk a bit about that? That how the LED mix will improve for us and our margins will increase that? So see, uh, as this, uh, you are right, this LED percentage of the total automotive lighting is increasing. As uh, for last year, it was 52% in comparison to the FY23, where it was 49%. Right. And, and uh, yeah, and about the increasing trend here. Yeah. In two, three years, it is going to touch 75%. And how much higher cross margins Yes, sir. See, uh, gross margins are same because it is going to the same customers, but the uh, point is that it will be higher realization. Right. right. Uh, how much higher realization, sir? I think we've spoken about a story. If you can just repeat. No, no, no. I think you are, uh, what uh, we 2x or 3x, we are comparing with the conventional uh, versus, uh, versus LED as a realization. Not the higher margin you are Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participant to ask a question, you may press star and one. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network Capital for the closing comments. I uh, just want to thank the management of Yam Industries for uh, very elaborately and patiently answering all the questions. Uh, also, on behalf of Monarch Network, we thank all the participants for joining the call. Uh, Jen, sir, uh, would you like to give any closing comments, please? Yes, yes, please. I would like to thank everyone for participation in the today's conference call. I hope that we have adequately addressed all your queries. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you. On behalf of Monarch Network Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us and you may be